Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, 1903. The Wright brothers made history by becoming the first people to fly. The propeller plane was a major revolution in its time and allowed people to finally travel much larger distances in remarkably less amounts of time. This invention impressed huge amounts of people. It was a big feat, but there were many problems with it. Even with all the advancements in lighter equipment and more efficient engines, propeller planes were still severely underpowered and couldn't fly over long distances. The world of flight was ready for another revolution, the jet engine. The way the jet engine works is it, it takes uh, in air um, and compresses it through stators uh, and vanes. So using the Venturi principle, as air compresses, it gets hotter um, and then becomes more powerful, basically. Um, you add fuel to that, uh, and then you use expansion on the out on the uh, exhaust side to uh, to develop thrust. Sir Frank Whittle was the Englishman who first created this technology back in 1930. The British were skeptical, but Germany's Ernst Heinkel saw its potential and used it in his plane, the Heinkel HE178. It was a small, quick plane, but could only fly for 10 minutes. Despite all of the plane's shortcomings, the Nazi regime recognized that jet planes were the future of air combat. They poured money into developing a combat-ready jet plane and were rewarded with the combat versions of the 178 and later the much-improved 262. These were the first jet planes to enter war. The early jets were known as turbojets, and they were relatively crude devices. They had problems with acceleration. They're very hard to take off, and that was some of the problems that the Germans found when they were trying to use them as an aircraft. The Germans were having these issues with their jet fighters. This led them to begin developing new, more effective jets. Throughout constant innovation during World War II, the Luftwaffe obtained a deadly arsenal of jet fighters. These new planes made them superior to the Allies in air combat. One of their most feared planes was the Messerschmitt ME-262. Due to its incredible speed, the Allies found these to be a formidable enemy in battle. It had a variety of roles, including light bomber, reconnaissance, and dogfighter. The reaction to the Luftwaffe's new force was substantial. Nobody had ever seen anything like these new fighters. Pilots had a difficult time keeping up with their competition, and many were shot down in the process. Generals scrambled to create new tactics to counter the Nazis' revolutionary planes. Unfortunately for the Luftwaffe, their many revolutionary designs entered much too late in the war for them to be of significant use. Although it was too late for the Nazis, these planes forever changed air warfare. The jet engine was not just a revolution in war, but also impacted the common person as well. The commercial aspect of the jet engine revolution was first seen in the jet-powered de Havilland Comet. Yeah, so if you look at it, it was de Havilland that was the, uh, the key promoter of uh, jet engines and commercial aircraft. And he had, through his airplane company, they developed something called the Comet in the early 1950s. And the, the British were known as the ones that really made commercial use of the jet engine technology. Instead of just military pilots, normal people could now fly in the jet aircraft. The Comet made air travel much safer, faster, and more reliable than conventional planes. The Comet brought out a new surge in the transportation of people and products. It was the beginning of a new era for both businesses and citizens. The next advancement in military jet technology came in the Vietnam War. The Northern Vietnamese Air Force began to utilize Russian-made MiG-15s. They were extremely effective planes and represented a huge challenge for the U.S. The United States responded with the use of the F-4 fighter. The F-4 was a larger and heavier plane, capable of reaching higher speeds and carrying more payload. The downside was its reduced maneuverability. However, these fighters were still capable of taking down MiGs, all the way from the MiG-15 through the MiG-21. With the addition of planes such as the F-104, both the Vietnamese and the Americans had a very large number of jet planes. At the time, the Vietnam War utilized more jet planes than had ever been used before. Classic dogfights like the F-4 versus MiG-15 occurred often during the war. Although it was hard work and many lives were lost, America eventually wrestled control of the skies from Vietnam. This edge in the skies allowed for the Air Force to assist their stressed ground troops. Throughout the Vietnam War, the United States had to create many tactics to counter the Vietnamese Air Force, which they continued to use in the future wars. 
During and after the Vietnam War, the commercial jet industry continued to boom because of advancements in military technology. It was not uncommon for an air flight that would be a piston-powered commercial airliner to fly over the Atlantic and lose an engine or two over that uh, flight. That's why they had four, uh, four engines on it. Boeing emerged as the primary commercial jet provider for the travel industry. They introduced their 707 as the pinnacle of both speed and luxury of the time. Flying was an indulgence, and people enjoyed it. Apart from the transportation of people, the 707 and other commercial jet aircraft allowed for much more efficient overseas trade. Commercial planes continued to improve, and the Concorde emphasized the best new technology. It was the fastest and most comfortable plane a person could fly on. Because of the Concorde's double delta wings and super cruise capability, it was able to exceed 1,000 miles per hour. However, only 20 Concords were ever produced, making ticket prices sky high. Despite the low availability of the Concorde, it gathered large amounts of fame and highlighted the highly reformed jet engine technology. In recent times, jet engines have become a key part of the U.S. military. They were used with much success in the Gulf War and the war in Iraq. With our modern jet fighters, the Iraqi Air Force, which mostly comprised of MiGs, was quickly and easily defeated. Planes such as the A-10 Warthog, F-22 Raptor, Harrier Jump Jet, and B-2 Spirit Bomber have allowed for America and Europe to dominate the skies. The Warthog and F-22 Raptor defeated the Iraqi Air Force and have provided much needed support to the troops on land. The Harrier has become the major fighter of the European Union. Finally, the B-2 Bomber has gone undetected while delivering its deadly payload in the Middle East. Without the air superiority provided by these planes, the troops in Afghanistan would be cut off from communications, backup, and rescue, all of which are vital to their survival. In the commercial realm, jet engines have continued to improve upon previous successes. Anyone can now ship products across the globe at prices cheaper than ever previously imagined. This has decreased the prices of almost all products and has made it easier for anyone to connect with others far Look away. The, the A320s and the 747s, those types of passenger jets to carry hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people and, and then thousands and thousands and thousands of uh, pounds of weight, which you know you never would have thought certainly 50, 60 years ago. Boeing has continued its advancements in commercial transport with the Boeing 787 Dreamliner. After years of delays, it was finally unveiled in Japan where much of its technology was created. Using new GE engines, the efficiency of the plane has greatly improved upon that of the 747. Another beneficial attribute is that the engines of the 787 Dreamliner run mostly on electricity, substantially cutting the cost of fuel and reducing harmful emissions. This is just another way the jet engine has connected the globe. The future of jet engines lies mostly in unmanned aircraft. Unmanned stealth planes like the X-47B bomber will use the most advanced technology to remain undetected on dangerous missions. It will utilize a variety of methods to ensure that it has the speed and power of a jet engine, but remains stealthy. Reconnaissance planes like the Global Hawk will use jet engines to stay at high altitudes a long time while keeping an eye out on the ground. New jet engines will also provide recon planes with the ability to run near space missions, expanding the horizon for new information. Jet engines have reformed immensely since their revolutionary inception. They quickly adapted from being an unreliable hunk of metal to the cutting edge of modern warfare. Jet engines shocked the Allies in World War II with their amazing capabilities and brought out a new surge of transportation soon after. They became a focal point of the Vietnam War and a show of luxury and class. Nowadays, jet aircraft protect our military and allow people and products to move about the world. If you think about um, the ability to, um, for people to travel, um, not only transcontinental, but just uh, intracontinental, for, so from east coast to west coast, you know, prior to, to World War II, you know, the, the fastest way to get there was by train, and that was still going to take you, I don't know, probably close to a week to go from coast to coast. It was definitely one of the, the great inventions. I'm not sure if it was that actually was the greatest because it led into so many other things that made it so much possible. If you look at it, the jet engine led to the development of the 747, which truly changed the way we who knows what the future of jets could hold, but if their amazing past hints at the future, it won't be anything short of spectacular.